Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the one Bitcoin show. Today is September the 23rd, 2020. Strong hand, long-term thinking. Bitcoin is next. Bitcoin, one day closer to an all-time high. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Offended by selling. Unconfiscatable. Compete, don't complain, guys. All right. Personal responsibility is the new counterculture. Hello, my elite friends. How are you doing? September 23rd, baby. Beautiful day outside. Want to go running. Uh, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. If you have questions, I have answers. Type in Bitcoin Meister, or you can do a super chat, something that's uh, going to catch my attention. All right. We're going to jump into the show right now. And I have a question. Bitcoin had that uh, 10,000, uh, you know, you, you fiat freaks because we're in the five digit realm. Bitcoin had closed every day whenever you judge that closing time to be. I don't know what what, what is that in England or the United States they pick it. it it's it was on a streak closing ten now during this recently there were a couple set couple day minutes hours it was under 10k is the streak still going because like the longest it had ever been over 10k closed the day at over 10k was like 63 days and I think we might might be getting close to that so I didn't want to go look for it. I didn't have time to look for this. Uh, are, are, are we at, are we at that streak, or did the streak even did the streak officially end because it was below ten k? It closed before below ten k. Of course, I value my wealth in Bitcoin, so I really don't give a darn. Um, but it, it would be interesting to know. So this is your home for Bitcoin insider information, as all of you know. And so I stumbled upon this tweet and no one, some people have retweeted it. So I give them a, a lot of credit, but Steve Barber, I've had him on the show before. He's a Bitcoin miner. He, uh, creates, uh, he created a machine, <laughs> a, a rig that mines, uh, Bitcoin from uh, natural gas. That is the waste product of oil mining. Okay. Oil drilling. And he says, this is a, this is a, Quote from him, I should get him on the show. Uh, we have been contracted by a city to mine Bitcoin. That's all I'm saying for now. Now, he is based in Canada, based in Western Canada. So his clients are in Canada. I believe all of his clients are in Canada. So he has been contracted by a city, which I would assume to be a Canadian city, to mine Bitcoin. And that's all he can say for now. So this is huge news. I mean, depending how large the city is, but to have municipalities going that directly into Bitcoin, saying, hey, we we are getting into the Bitcoin mining business. This is really impressive in North America for this to happen. Uh, so I, I hope it uh, I hope we get more information on it soon. But there's your breaking news right there. You, you probably didn't hear it anywhere else. Pound that like button for a unique beast, home of insider information. I try to bring you guys original stuff here. Okay, now, and of course, new shirts. This is from Salt Girl. It's linked to below. All sorts of new shirts I've been wearing lately. So check out the recent shows, disruptmeister.com. Please follow Twitter, TechBall, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. Okay, and retweet the tweet, guys. I just put it out there. If you're watching this live and uh, hello, everyone's saying hello from L.A. Yes. Hi. Hi there. If you're in L.A. or you're in England or wherever you are watching this show, I'm in the suburbs of Baltimore. OK. Yes, it says uh, Disrupt Meister there. Twitter dot com slash tech Oh, this is like this is this is the Bitcoin shirt of the channel, man. I got custom custom shirts being made here. Jeez. All right. Now, uh, I had Dan, Daniel Prince on the show yesterday. 
uh, not yesterday, on this week in Bitcoin, Friday. I don't know what day it is anymore. Uh, and he he actually told me that he, I think he said it on the show, he was going to have a guy, a soccer guy on from Tampa of the USL. And that's the minor league of the, the major soccer league. Uh, but his name is uh, Lucky Mick, Lucky Kasona. He's a Zimbabwean who plays for Tampa. And he likes Bitcoin. More athletes getting into it. Again, it's a minor league athlete, whatever. Dan hasn't posted the interview yet, but I just thought that was cool. And I linked to, I linked to Lucky below. Lucky, the soccer player in Florida the, for Tampa. He's a Bitcoiner. Link to below. So uh, and I'm not putting him on a pedestal, uh, but I think it's, it's neat that more sports dudes are getting into it because, uh, well, they, they've got some, uh, they got some spare change. Maybe not a minor leaguer, but and he's also from Zimbabwe, so he knows the hard way why why Bitcoin is important. Now, Michael Saylor is becoming a cult hero. I, I got to say that in the Bitcoin space, I think I said I might have phrased it that way on this week in Bitcoin on Friday. Um, and yeah, he's that people are loving him now. He is saying like. Big, quote unquote, Bitcoin maximalist type of uh, sayings. I, mean, I don't like terminologies like Bitcoin maximalist, but uh, yeah, he's becoming a, a maybe even a hero of the Bitcoin Inquisition. I don't even know, but uh, I'm just happy he <laughs> he's so hardcore. It's great that he's hardcore. The other CEOs out there that are going to uh, trigger their companies into buying it, they don't have to be that hardcore, uh, but he's, who knows? He, he's getting interviewed by lots of people now, uh, and that's great that he's up for the interviews. I think that's cool. Now, opposite of Michael – and Michael Sarah does not want anything but Bitcoin. That, that's cool. So that makes him a cult hero <laughs> uh, for some. But uh, I have no problem if he, he wanted to buy other things. It's not a, not a, not a big deal for me. But, uh, I mean, we all know one Bitcoin because one Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin, only to buy freaking Bitcoin, of course. Um, and what do we have? Yield farmers make 500% returns – but most can't read smart contracts. Well, there's your DeFi note of the day. Does that shock anyone? Does that shock anyone? Uh, people are buying things they totally do not understand. I've said it since the very beginning. If you're going to buy an altcoin, do you know how to send the Bitcoin even? Do you know how to send that Ethereum that you're buying? Good idea to know what you're buying. But in, in the cryptocurrency space, no one takes that simple advice. I'm, I'm sure some of these yield farmers uh, don't even know how to send a, a Litecoin. Uh, it, it's a but but there, there we go. The article linked to below is the dudes making five hundred percent returns. They can't read the smart contracts. They they don't know what they're buying. Uh, and the other day, you know, the, this last week, Bitcoin got over eleven thousand at one point. Uh, it was I think it was on Thursday, and I was so busy last week with traveling and everything going on with the family. Uh, I had no idea it, it even went above eleven thousand. When usually I, I'll know. Fiat freaks will contact me, whatever. I'll check the price. I didn't even know. So hey, it's good. It's good to get away from. It's good to take a break sometimes. Definitely go I, 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 to take a break from all this craziness and not to know every second what the darn uh, price is. I And I, I've recommended that for a while. I, I try to practice it. But when you're prepping for these shows and it just. Yeah. So I'm really proud that I didn't know it was 11,000 uh, when, when it jumped over 11,000. Okay. Oh, man. Um, all right. So Andy Hoffman's got a great uh, a great line from a new post of his talking about gold. You know, He's saying to get rid of your gold, of course. Um, but he says, finally, with 100% certainty, that's a classic Andy Hoffman line, I, the way he wrote it. I am telling you that as the baby boomers who own nearly all the world's retail gold and silver die and silver die over the next two decades, essentially all bullion cute coins uh, they pass to their millennial and Gen Z heirs will be sold for digital assets, principally Bitcoin. OK, now I don't agree that all of the gold that's going to be passed on to the Gen Zers and Gen Xers will be sold for Bitcoin. Uh, I, maybe not even the majority. But uh, the, the big point, in other words, precious metals, demographics could not be uglier. I agree with that. In contrast to Bitcoins, which couldn't be better. OK, so he makes a good point here. Uh, people who own Bitcoin, they're older. Older people die. They die. You know, you're 90, you're 97 years old. You, you die sometimes. 
And uh, they have gold. They're going to pass it on to the next generation. Now, if you're a digitally oriented young person, are you going to really want to hold on to that gold? Or are you going to want to change it into something else real fast? Now, I think a lot of people are just going to cash it in. I, I, I So I don't agree with uh, uh, that. that uh, wait, did he say? I don't want to misquote him here. Oh, God. Principally, he said principally Bitcoin. Well, I, get, I, I, think, I think most of the people uh, that, that inherit it will cash it out. Okay, they'll turn it into cash. But I do think a substantial amount of people with that long-term thinking gold and hold mentality, you know, it's passed on from generation to generation, the gold and hold mentality. But the next generation doesn't necessarily want to hold this, this rock. Um, so I think a lot of them, yes, he's, he's, he's spot on there. Uh, will want to turn their gold I- into Bitcoin, uh, and it's uh, we're we're going to see some some changes here. The, they're not going to be as many precious metal holders. That that's for sure. And I hope I I, I hope you know you, you shouldn't just cash it in and buy a Lamborghini with your grandma's gold. Okay, you, you shouldn't do that. Uh, you, you should keep that long term mentality going and. Uh, buy that Bitcoin. And my, my grandmother, by the way, <laughs> did not, if my grandmother had gold, she does not have, there are no gold bars there, or anything at the condo. I, I, and I, not that I looked, but my grandma never told me anything about gold or anything like that. Um, no, I, I, but if there were, if my grandma gave me gold, uh, gold bit, bullion, if I found out there was gold beneath the condo floor or whatever, I would turn that into Bitcoin, baby. Definitely. Definitely turn that into Bitcoin. Not, not, not. I want to keep. The, I would not keep the gold if my grandmother uh, had gold at all. No, no, no sentimentality there at all. Um, but she did not have gold. But I'm just putting it in perspective. Okay, <laughs> tying it into uh, real life uh, experiences. Now, uh, Gemini sent out a uh, not very golden hole type of email here. Uh, so yeah, inherited gold disposal. That's what I, I call that. How will people dispose of the gold that they inherit? That will become a bigger and bigger question. Thank you, Andy Hoffman, because they're not the young, at least the young people, they are going to want to dispose of. Gemini does not, uh, they're into the DeFi craze, okay? Invest in DeFi, says this email. This is from Gemini. We have three new tokens available for trading on Gemini PAX G, AMP, and COMP. Each of these expand the range of our platform and further our mission to empower the in- individual through crypto. Okay, very nice mission you have there uh, to get people into DeFi. But hey, they know they know pe- people are impulsive. They want the latest and greatest thing, the flavor of the month. That is freaking DeFi right now. <laughs> oh, man. Nice background. <laughs> You can see my orange running pants. <laughs> All right. We got a question. 2Froggy404 said, do you still buy Bitcoin or do you just hold now? If you're buying, do you want? Do you wait till it drops to a certain level or buy on a schedule? Dude, so since no one – so many people – you pay attention. Uh, I can say so much on this show because some people so, – so many people just don't pay close attention. Um I have a lot of Bitcoin. I don't need any more Bitcoin. I'm quite well. I'm well off, but I did buy more Bitcoin um, uh, when on March the twelfth, when it we had that everyone was going crazy because of the virus. They thought the world was ending. All the all the markets uh, crashed, and uh, I over uh, between the twelfth and the thirteenth. Since I knew I was going to get a check from the government, uh, I knew they would give us uh, these these stimulus checks. I bought two Bitcoin on, on over. It cost uh, the both of them combined cost over a little bit over ten thousand um, dollars. So I, I bought two in March, which is so. No, but I, I have those. I have no plans to buy anymore. There's no point in me. But you never. If something crazy like that happens again, I, I would. If there's a massive drop, um, I have no plans to ever uh, buy Bitcoin again. No, I have. I'm very and and so you, I just get Bitcoin for free. I get Bitcoin for free. You know, you know, through earning it, people, you know, will pay me with it through Steam, through through posting this stuff, um, through donations. Thank you, people that support the channel. But through crypto dividends, I mean, we're going to keep on getting these crypto dividends. You turn the crypto dividends into Bitcoin. That's what I plan on doing. And I have so much Bitcoin that I the crypto dividends, it's it's substantial. You know, when I when I even some 
whatever, to, from from MWC to B Rhodium to whatever. Um, I'm not I'm not complaining on, on how I, I did. Um, and you know, I've been talking about this stuff for a long time, and I practice what I preach. I put myself in a position where, um, to tell you the truth, I don't re- I don't feel like doing these shows anymore. <laughs> You know, after, but you know, my grandmother always said, um, it's so short. She said, you know, she says it goes, not, not it's, it's no, no, I misquoted her there. It goes by fast. It goes by fast. It goes by so fast. I mean, life goes by fast and life is short. Life is short. It goes by so fast. And, um, you know, being up at all hours of the night so I can do a Bitcoin show for people. It, you know, I mean, I know people enjoy this stuff and everything, but I, I, I guys, I got to be honest. I do not feel like doing this anymore <laughs> at all. That's why I was laughing at the beginning of the show and everything. It's it's just, um, yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> and yeah, I, it, it really, you know, my father passed. It, it, I, I wanted to keep on doing the show until, um, and I'll still do the show here and there and everything, but. Um, it's a, it's a good time to wrap things up with my, the passing of my grandmother and everything. This, this thing's, I, I want to actually end this show right now, but I do have things listed below. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let me see what else do we have here. We'll have, we'll have this week in Bitcoin on Friday. Don't worry. This week in Bitcoin will be on Friday. I'm, it's probably going to be at 2 p.m. on Friday. Um, I want to know, I want to know from you guys, what is the point of me doing this show anymore? Really? What is the point? Do do does, do people pay attention? I mean, what's the, what's the point? What's the point? I want to know what the point is for me and for you. If I'm not enjoying it, what is the point? What's the point of me doing these shows? Um, I, I mean, are you, I don't, I just I feel like people out there. It appears most people they're not really. They sit there and drool and watch whatever YouTube feeds them, um, and they want the generic information. They want to hear about the DeFi. They want to, and I don't give a darn about DeFi. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. They want me to tell them what to buy. They want me to. Um, everyone's got to be independent here, and uh, I mean I, I set up a system for everyone. Uh, you know, buy and hold, think long term, wait for the halvings, collect your crypto dividends. Uh, and I think people want me to say, like, buy Decred or, or, or you know, b- have Andreas on your show. It's been done. It's all been done. It's all been done. And uh, yeah. I, I mean, the archives are out there. I have so much out there. If you want to learn, go to disruptmeister.com. And uh, I mean, there's so many of you, so many people out there. They're like, I love the show. I love the show. And they have no idea what I even say on the show. And you know, all these people retweeting stuff of mine on Twitter and they're talking about listing me in these lists of great Bitcoiners and whatever. And they don't even pay attention. They don't. They don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. And and that's their business. And so it's there's it's this come to a point where I'm doing the show. I know people are watching, but it feels like so few people are listening, and so few people are comprehending. And I'm not having fun with this anymore. <laughs> it's it's become a pain in the tuchless. It really has to just. And it was to take to, to take some time off was great. And it felt real good. And uh, I'll keep – and I like I like the, fo- the the feedback I get from back from the podcast people. But this YouTube stuff, it's become like a show for people. They just want you to dance around and have you know hot girls on or have charts on. And it, there's no – there's like no give and take. There's no – you don't – people aren't learning. And people aren't – they're not listening. They're not listening half the time. And it's just like some people are just tuning in to tune in to hang in to chat with other people in the chat or whatever. That's, you know, that's a very, it's not a productive use. It's not a productive use of my time. And I don't think people are using it productively for their time at all. Um, and I know I'm going to get people to, you know, they're, they're going to DM me and say, I love it so much. Yeah. It's just not fun anymore. 
All right. Um, try and give me the honest truth. <laughs> There's your Beyond Bitcoin type of stuff. I mean, I really just want to cut this show off right now and say bye, but I'm not because I got other things listed here in the title and I'm, I'm going to, I got conviction for this show to say the least. Um, for this one show, at least. Microstat, this is a good point by Woo Namik. This is Willy Woo. Woo, woo, woo. Um, and he says the uh, MicroStrategy, a nimble publicly listed company, took six months to approve and complete their deployment in the Bitcoin. The average publicly listed company makes may take nine to 12 months for the same process. Start your timers. 2021 will be interesting. So his point is a legitimate one. If other companies out there were inspired by a micro strategy taking the plunge, it take you know because of the corporate structures, it takes them like six six to nine months uh, to actually get it all approved for them to buy the Bitcoin. So they made the six to nine months from now. If people, if some of these companies were inspired right now and have started the process, well, then the process will have ended six to nine months from now. And a lot more of these uh, entities will have bought Bitcoin, which is great for holders, which is great for holders. Um, great for me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what, do we, what do we have here? Advanced business. Uh, and more and more, and and I've been talking about this for years. I've been talking about it for years. You don't want to be the one wondering why you didn't get in before the big boys got in. Okay, so it's just it's just I'm giving you a little bit of a timeline here, even of logically why there are going to be a lot of big boys at a certain point in 2021. Advanced business accounts by Unchained Capital. They're anticipating a lot of big boys. Okay. They, they have come up with this thing, advanced business accounts. It's a multi-sig solution. Good job, Phil and the gang in Austin, Unchained Capital. Phil's been on the show many times. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do This Week in Bitcoin. That's all this channel will be. I, that's fun. I have fun doing that. That's fun. I have fun with the Beyond Bitcoin show, but that, that's a weird hour sometimes. So it's a pain in the butt to be up at Saturday and two in the morning. Um, I'm thinking out loud here. Uh, but so, yeah, the, the, the product that they, they've come up with down there in Austin, it's a multi-sig uh, solution. And it's really, they see that MicroStrategy has jumped into this. And I mean, what I mentioned, MicroStrategy three times on this show now. And all of you that are actually pay attention to anything that I say, um, I thought that was just the biggest news of the year when that happened earlier. Was it earlier this month or in August? Whenever it was, I was in Asheville. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a big turning point in Bitcoin, definitely. And these guys know it is because they made a product. And in, and in the description of its project product, they and I linked to the Coindesk article about it and the Unchained release about it. But they, they, they've talked about MicroStrategy and how these giant corporations – they need someone like a third party, like Unchained Capital, to manage it for them, to manage, to have a multi-sig solution for them. So Unchained Capital, you're going to get rich off of these dudes, okay, if you're not already rich, all right? Because more and more of them are going to come. You've got a legitimate pro project there, product. Now, if you're just a, a regular dude like me, just you know, have your storage device. You don't need to complicate things with the uh, – <laughs> You're not an advanced business with an advanced solution. Need, need in need of an advanced solution. Uh, you know, I, I I am of the strongest belief that you must control your own private key. Now, advanced business accounts is it? It's complex, okay. And these corporations are complex. They need they got custodial rules in their corporate charter, which won't wouldn't allow just like. Michael Saylor to put all the Bitcoin on a trezor. They need someone like Unchained Capital. Okay, so good for them. I see there's some questions. Um, do fancy sets and gra graphics? Uh, no, I would never. I know you're joking, motorist, but I will never sell out for to you know. I, I believe in what I believe, and I'm not gonna. I, I'm not 
No, I'm not wasting my time. It, it t- you know, some of the people that have it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a Bitcoin holder. So I don't do those things. I don't, I don't want to know about graphics and, and all these fancy things and getting on Telegram and having Telegram groups and ah, oh, all this nonsense. Chester said, uh, Chester Coppernot said, the Bitcoin Meister helped me stay away from S coins and Char- Charlton's in the space. Charlton's in the space. I will forever be grateful uh, for guiding me towards self custody of my Bitcoin. Thanks, bro. Well, thank you, Chester. It's very nice. I know you've been around for a while. All right. Uh, Adam is definitely the uh, funniest Bitcoin podcaster when he goes off on rants like fancy. Yeah, I think I am pretty darn hilarious when I go off on those rants. I, I'm entertained by it also, just listening to my own uh, uh, my voice when I when I talk about it. You, 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 sometimes I start laughing at myself during, during the entire situation. Um, yeah. All right. Now, moving on. What's this? Oh, this is a good. Matt O'Dell puts Lightning Network in a good perspective here. And this is a reminder of the confusion about Bitcoin. At its core, one of the most interesting aspects of Lightning is that fees are calculated based on the amount of sats you send rather than the size of the transaction in bytes. Okay. Conceptually, this makes more sense to new users and complements the on-chain uh, transaction fee model well. Okay, it makes more sense to new users. New users get into Bitcoin, they don't understand the fee structure at all. It does make more sense uh, to new people, at least, that uh, you know the, the more the more money you're sending, the more the fee is going to be, and that is not the way the Bitcoin base layer fee uh, structure is. But that is the lightning one, okay? Fees are calculated based on the amount of sats you send rather than the uh, size of the transaction in bytes. Size of the transaction in bytes, uh, they don't, a newbie is never going to get that. So that's a good aspect of lightning network. Now, of course, most newbies aren't going to get into lightning network, but it's a good comparison there. I, I, liked, uh, I liked what Matt had to say there. Here are some old news about valuing your wealth in Bitcoin. Yet uh, this is from early in September, but I'm just covering it now because I like this tweet. Um, you know what? Did I link to this below? I didn't even link to this below. Yet another Swiss canton accepts Bitcoin for settlement of tax bills. That's like a, a state in a. We have the United States of America in uh, in Switzerland. It's it's their cantons. It's a little different, but whatever. Another yet another Swiss canton accepts Bitcoin for settlement of tax bills. This is totally totally logical for any advanced nation, and will make them even more rich as time goes on. The stupid and the socialist will see the end result and not understand how it happened. So I, I do I, – I like that last part. Pound that like button for the last part. Who, who did that? Who put that tweet out there? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't save the uh, URL of the tweet. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, now, uh, yeah, yeah. What was I going to say about this? I'm thinking about something totally different when I say this. Yeah, it, it's it is that people are going to get you know in a few years this uh, they're doing pretty well in Switzerland. Okay, everybody knows Switzerland. They're rich. They do well. High standard of living. Great, great. Um, everybody wants the Swiss franc. Well, not everybody. It's a major currency, even though they're a little small little country up there. Uh, but they're going to take people are going to give them Bitcoin for taxes. They're going to save some of that Bitcoin. So what's going to happen to Swiss? They're going to become wealthier. And all these haters out there. Well, oh, it's unfair that Switzerland's getting even richer because they 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 have long term thinking. The stupid and the socialist, and that's the eighty percent are away. That's the eighty percent are away. An article from uh, the New York Times: two dollars and fifty cents a year in interest. That's what five thousand dollars in savings gets. Uh, with the Federal Reserve keeping rates low, home buyers are benefiting, but savers, their average interest rate is just 05 percent. 
How can you be a fiat freak with that, guys? How can you value your wealth in dollars with that? The average rate by, paid by banks on basic federally insured savings accounts known as annual percentage yields was a mere 0.05% as of Monday, according to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. How can anyone have savings accounts in the United States anymore? I really wonder. I really wonder. But some people are just stuck in that in that way. And a lot of them are old ladies, old people uh, getting the Bitcoin. So this week in Bitcoin, you're not going to get a much better than having Donald Trump and everybody keep on printing, printing, printing. And the bank's only giving you 0.05% value. How anyone can value their wealth in dollars anymore is beyond my uh, comprehension with, with uh, interest rates like that. And with Fed coin on the way, there are going to be negative interest rates eventually. Uh, and so, yeah, my my guests for the last This Week in Bitcoin were pretty – were great. Dan and Nico – or Daniel, Dan, whatever you want to call him, Nico and uh, BTC Dragon Lord. They all reminded me of other Bitcoiners I've had on the show before. So you, you can watch the show and make your own uh, make your own decision. Bitcoin price volatility expected as 40% of Bitcoin options expire on Friday. That's in 48 hours, less than 48 hours. Dudes, it's always a roller coaster. You know it's a roller coaster. Don't don't be a weak hand when that happens on Friday. We'll, we'll have some turbulence most likely. Back when I was in Australia, now a year ago, well, no, a little, o- little over a year ago, I was in, when I was uh, in Sydney in October, I got to see the Cryptopia film, and I was just informed by those guys. You can get it on Amazon now. I saw it in the theater in, in Sydney. No doubt there's no, there's no uh, theaters open in Sydney right now, because all the Australian authoritarian, socialist, freaking – collectivist, power-hungry, sociopathic leaders have shut down all of Australia. It's worse in Melbourne, I know, but watch uh, Beyond Bitcoin. I talk about that kind of stuff, these these horrifying Australian shutdowns. But you can watch Cryptopia like I did in Australia. But you can watch it at the comfort of your own home, thanks to Amazon, which gets a lot more business than they used to because the government has interfered and shut down mom and pop businesses and Amazon gets wealthier. Hey, but that's the way of the world. Now, finally, another sign of the times. Starting today, uh, Coinbase Pro will pass a lot. This is from the other day. We'll pass along network fees directly to our customers. These fees sometimes referred to as gas fees on the Ethereum blockchain, are paid directly to crypto miners that process transactions and secure the respective uh, network. Historically, Coinbase Pro has absorbed these fees on behalf of our customers. However, as crypto has begun to gain broader adoption in applications such like DeFi, payments and other projects, networks have gotten busier. Okay, what they're trying to say is that when you used to trade Ethereum over at uh, Coinbase Pro, you could send it out. They wouldn't charge you the transaction fee. But now so many people are freaking using Ethereum for DeFi and the fees are getting so expensive. It's expensive. They don't feel like paying it anymore. So <laughs> you're going to have to deal with that now. They're, they're passing on the price to you. And as well, they, you know, what they should. I mean, it's their thing. I guess they, they spoiled people for a while. If you are using Ethereum, then you should pay the freaking, uh, Fee and it's getting driven up because a lot of people are, are using it, quote unquote, using it to do all this DeFi stuff. All right, they got to s- solve their scaling issues. Ethereum is being used. You cannot de- deny that at all. Ethereum is the next Ethereum. You can hate on it, whatever. All that really matters is that Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Hey, Vention is uh, in the house, and I'm Vention. I'm really wishing you all the luck in the freaking world, dude. I am thinking about you. With the operation coming up, you got a strong hand, dude. Um, he says, uh, I blocked. Oh, he's just he's talking about a guy who often posts here who's here right now. Uh, someone, a guy that's here, excessive verbal abuse. That, that's on. That's unfortunate that that dude does that here. Dude, don't do an unfortunate. Don't do uh, excessive verbal abuse here. Um, Vention is an awesome dude. And uh, 
What else? Adam is one of the highlights of my day, says Zaya Zaza, a good fan here. I'll be disappointed, but his it's his choice. I'm grateful for everything he does. Conviction, baby. Yeah, conviction. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I'm not going to do these every day. I mean, it's ridiculous. I can't do these every day now. Uh, okay, but that, yeah, I'm not, I'm not disappearing or anything like that. But uh, I can't, I just can't do these every day. It's just, it's a pain. It's a pain in the tuchless. It really is. And it's just not, it's just, it's not the same anymore. A lot of things have changed over time. We all changed. The, 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 spa, the whole, the whole, sp I, I find most of the content uh, in the space disgusting and mindless, uh, but that's 80%. 80 what do you, it's, it's becoming a more, and, and that's a good sign that I'm finding most of the content to be mindless and 80% oriented. It's it just, it's growing. <laughs> it's not a niche little thing anymore. There's all sorts of people coming in here doing all sorts of things. They're welcome to do it. They're welcome to wear bikinis. They're welcome to do anything. Um, and the people and, and the people in the space are welcome to have nothing to do with a 20 percenter type of show like this. So, uh, and I'm welcome not to produce the 20. Uh, I'll produce a 20 percent of the rate. How, how about that? Uh, in, in true. Uh, just so, so that the 20 percenters can get their uh, grab, right? All right. That's it. Uh, I'm out of here. Have a good day, everybody. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister Disrupt Meister. Strong hand. Uh, and I'll, we'll definitely have a show on Friday. We'll definitely have this week in Bitcoin Friday. I don't know tomorrow what's going to happen. All right. I'll see you guys later. And Vention, we are all thinking of you, man. Good good luck with it. And someone, wait, hang on. Uh, okay, cool. See you guys.